Good morning. This is the fourth week of October 2021, and I've got some great energy stories for you this week. The first one, let's start with some news, big news in electric transportation. Just four months after exiting bankruptcy, Hertz Global Holdings announced it is ordering 100,000 Tesla Model 3s to be delivered over the next 14 months as part one of its plan to electrify its rental car fleet. Hertz will offer the Model 3 sedans in major U.S. markets and areas in Europe beginning in early November. And customers will be able to access Tesla's network of superchargers as Hertz builds out its own charging capabilities. The purchase is said to be worth an estimated $4.2 billion for Tesla. This ought to help EV sales really move along. There's no better way to sell electric vehicles than to put, as they say, butts in seats. EVs are better technology. They, they accelerate more quickly. They handle better. They're just better cars, as long as you don't have the range anxiety issue, which the supercharger network helps. So this should give a whole boost to the entire industry and certainly to Tesla in its retail markets. Whether it's Tesla or other EVs, more cars will need more batteries. So UK-based British Volt will shortly be manufacturing battery cells in Quebec in a 60 gigawatt hour plant meant to supply North America's car makers. The plant will include an R&D center, an anode, and a cathode processing facility as well. And British Volt is eyeing, quote, a strategic location, unquote, with access to a deep water port, railway connections, and renewable energy. And Hydro-Quebec, with its large hydro reservoirs, certainly has plenty of hydropower. Meanwhile, Stellantis and LG Energy Solution have announced a joint venture to build a 40 gigawatt hour factory making battery cells and modules in North America as well. This will be operational by Q1 of 2024, and the factory will supply Stellantis vehicle plants in the U.S., Canada and Mexico with battery models for both pure electrics and hybrids. The location still hasn't been announced with more details to be forthcoming soon, but a groundbreaking ceremony is set for Q2 of next year. Meanwhile, overseas, Taiwanese contract manufacturer Foxconn, the guys who make our iPhones, they announced three internally developed prototype EVs, the Model C SUV, the Model E sedan, and the Model T city bus, under the Foxtron brand. Foxtron, in turn, is a JV between Han Hai and Chinese car maker Yulon Motor. Well, last week we announced that New York's 2 plus gigawatt Empire Offshore Wind Project, that JV between BP and Equinor, would be delayed 18 months to the end of 2026, owing to regulatory issues and construction complexity. This week, Empire tapped Vestas to be its preferred turbine supplier, announcing it will order 138 of Vestas' V236 15 megawatt turbines for the Empire 1 and 2 projects, which are 15 to 30 miles off Long Island. It's rather fascinating to see how fast this technology is moving along and how confident the industry is in that evolution. On October 18th, so less than a week prior to this designation, Vestas announced that it will install and test its 15 megawatt prototype next year. So while it hasn't even yet been tested, it's already on order. And finally, a mega hydrogen story out of the historical clean energy hub of Mississippi, not. High Store Energy, a team of natural gas storage pros, announced that it intends to build the largest green hydrogen hub in the United States by 2025. By that date, it plans on manufacturing 110,000 metric tons of H2 annually and storing as much as 70,000 tons in underground salt caverns. For reference, this project is 10 times larger than the $1 billion Magnum Mitsubishi Advanced Clean Energy Storage Project in Utah that's also planning on a 2025 start date. High Store Energy won't offer a price tag, but the company does have the underground storage development shops, having developed over $3 billion worth of gas storage projects that hold approximately 100 billion cubic feet of gas. The company's planning on building its own renewables, which does require an entirely different skill set, to generate 100% carbon-free electricity, which would in turn be fed into electrolyzers that turn water into hydrogen and oxygen. Well, those are your energy stories for this, the fourth week of October 2021. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.